three, two, one. It's the Puff and Steph podcast. Puff and Steph, hurt. Happy Thursday! Thanks for making this part of your day. Very much appreciate it. Today's show brought to you by Freisinger Hyundai, right on the price, right on the pike. We are in the American Shaman of PA studio. Your morning and workouts do not need to be sluggish. Get more energy and focus with CB Go. Try CB Go for only fifteen dollars at American Shaman of PA. Steph, hello, happy Thursday. What up? Hi. How are you doing? Not bad. Yeah, yeah. How's life treating you? Uh, it's pretty good. Yeah, I good. can't complain. Okay. I'm always, always shocked when you say something like that because I can complain about <laughs> it. could be a super nice day and everything's going well and they'll be like, yeah, but I'm hungry. <laughs> yeah, but you know, the, the store didn't have my specific drink I wanted. Do you have something to complain about? Would you like to vent? No, because here's the thing. Life is not that bad for me. So I don't want to sit here and complain because right. it makes me seem like a jerk. Because you're other, counting your blessings, Because right? other, Sure, we'll go with that. Other people have much <laughs> bigger problems than I do. Hey, everybody has their stuff, you know? So let me give you a puppy update real quick. Yes, pup date. Um, very nice. That's, we should use that. It's like, <sighs> pup date. Yes. Um... Frank the Tank is doing well. Potty training is going pretty good. You know, a few accidents here and there, but for the most part, we're seeing an increase in what he understands in terms of that. Uh, he sits like a champ. We're working on, like, down, right? So, like, after a sit, we'll say down, and then sometimes he, he puts, you know, his whole body on the floor. That's pretty good. Um, yeah, he's uh, understanding boundaries. He's understanding no. We think he's starting to understand his name. Oh. Um, he's growing. I think he, we got him at 15 pounds. If I had to make a guess, I would say he's probably somewhere on 18 at this point. Oh, his paws are huge. I don't see someone else. When I posted a picture last week, someone commented, look at those paws. I don't think they're that big. They are for the size of his body. Like you can just, you with puppies a lot of times, like you can tell they're going to grow into their paws. Like they're just bigger than the rest of their body. Well, Ronnie... Ronnie had big paws as a puppy, like huge paws. Mm -hmm. And he grew into what we thought he was going to be, which was, you know, between 80 and 90 pounds uh, for the most part his whole life. This dog is supposed to be the same thing, 80 to 90 pounds. And Ronnie's paws were significantly bigger than this dog's paws. So I'm a little confused at what people are saying paws, because if I had to gauge just on paws alone, this dog won't hit 80. But he's supposed to. So I, I don't know. I, I don't know if I trust the whole big paws, big dog, because for me, his paws don't seem that big. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. Whatever. But, um, and he's getting along with Moogie well. Oh, good. Yep. They are, when we put them outside together, they chase each other. Uh, we also found a really fun thing we do with him, and that's with a laser pointer. Oh. He loves chasing. The, it's a good way to tire him out, too. Right. Like before bedtime. Right. So I'll turn on the laser pointer and move it around the house, and he's chasing it, jumping after like it. A cat. Hunting. Oh, yeah. He's very, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Well, I don't care if it's for a cat. We'll do it for the dog. Whatever. So. That's so fun. I'm he, glad the dogs are living in harmony. They that are. Is they're, like, there are moments where. Frank the Tank oversteps his bounds, and Moogie lets him know, and we <laughs> and we let Moogie let him know, you know, because there's a hierarchy in the house, and it's a pack, and Frankie has to know that he's not the leader, and his big brother, oh. like, follow him, because if he thinks that Moogie's above him, then he'll do what Moogie does. I'm so happy that you just called him his big brother. I feel like that's something I would say, and you'd make fun of me for it. No, it's his big brother. <laughs> I it's love that. Brother. So, um... You know, if he understands that Moogie's above him, he will look to Moogie for guidance in situations. That's what we hope. Because Moogie's a good dog. So, he is. So, yeah, that's your, your pup date. There you go. Mm, glad everything's good. So, you know, if he continues to, to get better at things, then we'll bring him back in. I hope so. We need a studio dog. Let's and see. it's not going to be Zoe because she is not well behaved. <laughs> uh, this is interesting. A survey in Canada revealed that 43% of Canadians would rather eat bacon than have fun adult time. (laughs) That's commitment right there to bacon. They'd rather eat bacon than hook up with someone. 43%. 43%. And it's just males and females in general. It's not one or the other. Correct. I would assume it's probably 
a lot of females in that group. Who are feeling the bacon <laughs> yes. more than the dudes? I would assume. All right. All right. Uh, so what's better for your breakfast, cereal or pizza? A New York nutritionist named Chelsea Amer says that it should be pizza. She says pizza may have more fat, but it has less sugar. So you'll have a better chance of avoiding a sugar crash later on. Also, the average slice of pizza and a bowl of cereal with whole milk contain nearly the same amount of calories. But pizza has more protein. Because of that, your appetite would be more satisfied. And you would be more likely to avoid snacking. So, do you like the idea of starting your day with pizza yeah. rather than cereal? I love that. And are it you, makes a lot of sense. Are you a cereal person? Um, I eat, like, Special K and, like, you know, like, protein cereal. Um, but... Usually when I eat it, it's not even breakfast time. I do it for like dinner or something. Right. So in my house, as we speak, there are four boxes of cereal. My wife and I are cereal people. Mm -hmm. We have Cocoa Krispies, Fruity Pebbles, Special K with strawberries. So good. That's mine. I love it. It's good stuff. Um, and um, what are the Frosted Flakes? We've Which talked I know. about Frosted We've talked flakes. about this. You hate them. Okay. I don't hate them. We just have different opinions. You hate them and you hate everyone who uses them. <laughs> I understand. I understand your side of things. I don't get the hype. Um, but furthermore. I don't get the hype. <laughs> I don't know how much hype is behind. <laughs> like, <laughs> okay, but there's like all those commercials with like the baseball teams and they're like, yeah, Frosted Flakes. And I just don't there, get it. There's no connection to baseball. What do you mean and you they're don't not get that great. It. It's a commercial. I just don't understand. They're so plain. What am I missing? It's cornflakes with sugar on them. They're pretty solid. They're good. They're just there for me. Like, I don't get it. It's the way the advertisements are. What, what are you talking about? They're, <laughs> they're commercials. They're supposed to be over the top. But there's no connection to baseball. All these sports teams are Tony like, oh, the Stan Tiger. Flakes. That's Tony the Tiger. I just don't understand. Tony the Tiger is an athletic big cat. I, see, I don't agree. <laughs> well, Tony the Tiger's baseball skills would argue with you. <laughs> He does. He did everything. He's Tony the Tiger snowboarding. Tony the Tiger playing football, playing baseball, playing hockey. Tony the Tiger. I mean, he doesn't play golf because kids aren't into golf. But like, it's Tony the Tiger doing stuff. It's it's not the fact that they're equating the cereal to baseball. It's the mascot for the cereal. Right. I mean, I, I appreciate their attempt at marketing. I just don't get it. Although I do, like, never in my whole life have I got done playing any type of sports and then went, man, I could use some Frosted Flakes right now. Exactly. That that I do agree with you, but it's not the product as much as it's the mascot. Okay. I see where you're coming from. All right. But anyway, pizza <laughs> for breakfast. <laughs> yes. Uh, I'd pick pizza. 100%. I would too. I think... Uh, I think that it's more filling, and I don't know, like, it. what's the word I'm using? I want to use it. I say appetizing. It, it ple it's more pleasing to eat. There's, like, for the most part, a more complex flavor profile. Yeah. Wow, this is deep. Yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a more complex flavor profile than your average breakfast cereal. <laughs> and, and you're right. Like, pizza, or the study's right. Like, pizza just has more stuff going for it than, you know, cereal and milk. Right, the tomato sauce, vegetables are mixed into there. Like it's, yeah, it's I mean, toma stuff. yeah, tomato. Right. I don't put vegetables on my pizza, really. No, but the tomato sauce. Yeah. I mean, it's Heck all yeah. there. It's all and there. And not even mention the cheese. So, yeah. And that was your culinary minute with Puff and Steph. Uh, coming up, this is something maybe we're going to have to ask ourselves. Is Canada better than us? Yeah. It's the Puff and Steph Podcast. Freisinger Hyundai, a refreshingly different car buying experience. Freisinger Hyundai dedicates itself to customer satisfaction. From the initial sale to the maintenance you'll need during the life of the vehicle, Freisinger Hyundai treats you like family. Check out their large selection of both the latest Hyundai lineup to certified pre-owned and used vehicles. Come see how Freisinger Hyundai drives the difference and tailors the purchase process to your needs. Right on the price, right on the pike. Freisinger Hyundai, 6115 Carlisle Pike Mechanicsburg, 717-766. 8422. During this time, many are out of work and struggling just to get by. It's good to know that your friends at Capital City Buy and Sell in Harrisburg have your back. 
If you're in need of extra help during the pandemic, you can pawn or sell unwanted or unneeded items that you may have laying around your house, including jewelry, electronics, tools, musical instruments, and a whole lot more. Capital City Buy and Sell is open seven days a week, and they're always paying cash. Plus, they have low pawn interest and terms if you aren't quite ready to say goodbye to your item just yet. Capital City Buy and Sell, 3517 Walnut Street, Harrisburg. Online at harrisburgpapawn.com. Great news, everyone. American Shaman of PA's doors are back open for normal operations, and they're ready to bring you the much-needed relief that you've been waiting for. They care about their customers, and their customers keep coming back for more. Steve K says, American Shaman products drastically decrease my back pain and relieve my stress in just one month. Thank you. Stop by your local American Shaman of PA store for a free CBD sparkling water and free samples. Find their locations and more at HempusHealth.com. Do you love saving money but hate buying one of those coupon books filled with places you'll never go to? Well, here comes Quick Save Coupons to save the day. Quick Save Coupons is an app where you can find savings for restaurants, stores, and experiences that you will love. And here's the best part. It's free. No big coupon books to buy, no websites to give your information to. Quick Save Coupons will show you all of the savings in your area right on your phone. Just go to Google Play or the App Store and download the Quick Save Coupons app. Then start saving money on many of the places you already go to. Now back to the Puff and Steph podcast. A new initiative by Canada Postal Service uh, will see every single residential address in the country, about 13 and a half million homes, receive a free postcard. The idea, and Steph, you're going to, I know already, you're going to be like, oh, so here we go. <laughs> the idea is to send the postcard to a loved one. You can send it to anyone you want within Canada at no cost. The postcards are a part of a campaign called Right Here, Right Now, and Right Spelling W R I T. Yes. Oh, that is sweet. It's uh, to encourage Canadians to write heartfelt letters to family and friends. That's really sweet. Is it because of the pandemic or just in general? I think a lot of it has to do with the pandemic. Right. That is a nice idea because. It's hard to believe now that we're a year into this, but a lot of people still haven't been like seeing their families and friends. Yep. So it is a nice idea. We're, we're really coming up on that year anniversary of 15 days to flatten the curve. Should we do something to, to celebrate? Y- yes, stay, <laughs> away. stay away from each other. <laughs> I guess so. I, uh, it's a I, nice idea. I know, it's kind of corny. Oh, uh, okay. Listen, people don't hand write like, letters and notes to each other anymore. So I don't I know a lot nice. about Canada's economy. I don't know a lot about Canada's issues. I'm sure they have them. This would get lamb basted in America if someone came up with this idea. Because think about it. Every single home. Now, we are way more populated than Canada. But every single home gets a postcard to send to another home for free. I mean, that's billions, oh. that's billions of dollars. Yeah, most people would probably, not most, a lot of people would throw it away and not do it anyway. Oh, they, absolutely they wouldn't. Um, and then you'd have people like me who would probably just sit there and pick on it. And then also go, really, this is what we're spending our money on, America? True. Where's that money coming from? This is what, we're, we're spending money to print this paper. Yeah, true. We're spending money in the mail. I mean, it, all of these postcards have to travel by mail. So that's one thing that they can't, you know, that's one piece of mail that they can't carry for each person. So, like... <sighs> right, there's better things to spend the money and, on. And here's the thing, and I think this is going to shock you, what I'm about to say. It makes me a little sad. Because the first thing I thought of when I saw this was, like, all negatives. And I was like, man, I am a cynical person. And I'd maybe there's times where I shouldn't be cynical. Are you sad that nobody sends you postcards? No, it has nothing to do with that. <laughs> with that. I'm sad that my first thought was negative. Oh, yeah. Because this is not supposed to be a negative thing. No. This is supposed to be a positive thing. And the only things I'm thinking of are, well, how much money is that going to cost? Who, where do we get the paper from? Somebody, somebody's hiring their uncle to print all these cards in government. Oh, it, like I, the the first like nine things I think are, are like negative. But are, you're not alone. I know, but that doesn't mean it's okay. No, true. It is. I mean, it is sad. But it's a little sad. I was. I felt a little sad after I my first initial thoughts. I was like, wow, this is meant to bring people together, and I'm here like trashing it. You know what though? You have a valid point. I mean, we're going through kind of. 
an unprecedented time as we talked about earlier or yesterday. Um, and there's a lot of things that I think that money could probably be better spent on. And uh, and that's coming from someone whose first reaction to this was, oh, yay. It's, I mean, it is true. Yeah. And again, I don't have, I don't understand what's going on in Canada. I know that <clears throat> they got like moose, mooses, meese. Um, they and, do. And they got. They do have those. Like. Mountie cops on horseback and they maple syrup yeah i mean hockey yeah. they like hockey mm-hmm. i don't know anything else that's about um it. yeah that sums it up so i don't know what kind of challenges they face to allow them to do these postcards but i know that if it was tried here in the states i don't think it would ever ever work out because and trust people people in canada are going to throw this away too yeah they will not participate it's not like every canadian's like oh this is Oh, it's amazing, eh? And then they fill it out, and they, no, they, they don't. They, not everyone's going to participate. But in America, I think we have the, I don't know, first instinct to kind of crap on a deal, <laughs> a, a new idea. A lot of people, yeah, a lot of people would, you know, even if they didn't throw it away, they would mock it and probably write some very sarcastic note and send, you know, send it to someone. Send it to someone random or like to their buddy. They not everybody would be like, I love you. God bless. Let's be honest. <laughs> All right. So I, I think that is a little surprising that I did get a little sad that I was cynical, but that doesn't make me not still think negatively, but You I, still are cynical. I'm like, I'm like, man. Maybe I need to start thinking positive thoughts first. Yeah. Like Steffers. Anyway. I am very curious for what you have to say about this. Chinese divorce court has ordered a man to pay $7,700 to his ex-wife for domestic services she rendered during their marriage. It's a groundbreaking ruling in the first case concerning a recently enacted law that may require breadwinning ex-spouses to cover the years their partner spent cooking, spent cleaning, spent raising children, nursing elder relatives, or otherwise supporting the family from home. The couple in question, uh, whose identities are limited to their surnames, Wang and Chen, were married for five years, uh, two of which they spent separated before ultimately filing for divorce last year. Mrs. Wang has argued that she is entitled to compensation for the two years that they, she reared her son with no substantial input from her husband. The court awarded full custody of their son to the, the mother <clears throat> and to pay. Um, and he was going to pay her uh, about $300 a month going forward and an additional $50,000, $7,700 for chores and childcare. So what they're saying because I was a little rambling is if you spent 10 years with someone and someone was a stay at home, home, what do they call home maker, right? Whether it's a guy or the woman, you know, not not to go into gender roles here, but let's say that it was the female. She spent that time cooking, cleaning, raising children, making sure everything was in order, all that good stuff. She's entitled to some sort of compensation for her time, for services. Steph, are you for or against this? No, I don't agree with that. (gasps) Why should, I mean. Yes, that is the correct answer. uh, I don't know. I don't want to get any hate. It's just my gut reaction is just like, you know, she was taking care of her kid. It's what moms do. It's yeah. probably what she wants to do. I mean, if she yeah. likes being a mom, like most moms do, as far as yeah. I'm aware, I don't think that he should have to pay her for that. I mean... No, I, you're 100% right. Because here's my thing. Here's my... you. Th- this is so sexist. And I'm going to say this based on statistics. Okay? Statistically, your homemakers are women. Obviously, there's outliers. Men have done it too. Women are the breadwinner. I'm not saying that doesn't happen. Right. I'm saying statistically, the higher percentage of women are homemakers. Okay. So let's just use that for this. You spend X amount of money or X amount of time in a relationship doing that stuff. What about the guy? The guy doesn't get any money for being a dad. Right. I mean, I'm sure he was involved. Not only that. Does she owe you money for back rent? You paid the money for the mortgage on the house. 
Right. If she was a stay-at-home mom... That's where she lived. Should she owe you money for the back rent? Right. It could go both ways. Absolutely. What about the car you bought her? Right. You know, what about what about the credit cards that you pay off that she uses? What about the money for groceries? What about the money for groceries that she's using to cook the meals? You bought them. She cooks. It's part of being married. You're a team. It, it, that's just it. And you it's both not, pitch in. And for me, it's not to pick on one sex or the other. It really isn't. It's like you both did your jobs. It just didn't work out. So you separate, and then custody is where the money gets, you know, separated. Right. You kind of need to just go, okay, you know, he did this, I did that. We were together for a while. It didn't work. We're going our separate ways. Right. Custody, and then there's also alimony or whatever. So how, like, that's such a, that opens up a Pandora's box for so many different arguments. Do you want to itemize your relationship? Yeah. You know, well, four years ago, you know, you wanted a new dishwasher, and I bought you one. That was for the house, not really for you. So that's something that I brought to the table. So take four hundred bucks off that, or depreciated value. Now it's worth eighty nine. So now you know now it's eighty nine or whatever. Like you just like stop. Like yeah. stop it. That doesn't really work that way. It shouldn't work that way. But it did here seventy seven hundred dollars for the last two years of chores and childcare duties. Yeah, to me, you just have to move forward and let it be in the past. You were married at one point, you were a team. Right. You both did things. You're right. Wow. I am so proud of you. Thank you. And here's the thing, you're not a hardcore feminist. I wasn't a, I wasn't sure where you're gonna stand on this, but I was pretty sure you're gonna be on my side. But when you started to talk, I was so, I was so happy. So proud. I was so happy we weren't gonna get into an argument. No. Because it just it just seems stupid and it seems petty. Very I think petty. It, I think I think it is a is a good word for it, petty. Now if you have a bad breakup, you know, you could start nickel and diming the exactly. whole thing. I just don't remember we talked about that a couple years ago. Some guy went out on a date couple dates with this girl and it didn't work out, and then he sent her a bill a for idea. their dates. No, it is <laughs> not a good <laughs> idea. <laughs> No, it is not. I remember we talked about that, and you weren't fully defending him, but you said, well, maybe he kind of has a right. And I said, uh, no. He took her on a date. He wanted to pay for her. She does not owe him money. <laughs> Forgot about that story. I mean, at least go halves at that point. No. <laughs> nope. No, thank you. I would not. Uh, coming up in just a couple of minutes, what would you do if you lived next to this guy? It's the Puff and Steph Podcast. Freisinger Hyundai, a refreshingly different car buying experience. Freisinger Hyundai dedicates itself to customer satisfaction. From the initial sale to the maintenance you'll need during the life of the vehicle, Freisinger Hyundai treats you like family. Check out their large selection of both the latest Hyundai lineup to certified pre-owned and used vehicles. Come see how Freisinger Hyundai drives the difference and tailors the purchase process to your needs. Right on the price, right on the pike. Freisinger Hyundai, 6115 Carlisle Pike Mechanicsburg, 717 766 8422. During this time, many are out of work and struggling just to get by. It's good to know that your friends at Capital City Buy and Sell in Harrisburg have your back. If you're in need of extra help during the pandemic, you can pawn or sell unwanted or unneeded items that you may have laying around your house, including jewelry, electronics, tools, musical instruments, and a whole lot more. Capital City Buy and Sell is open seven days a week, and they're always paying cash. Plus, they have low pawn interest and terms if you aren't quite ready to say goodbye to your item just yet. Capital City Buy and Sell, 3517 Walnut Street, Harrisburg. Online at harrisburgpapawn.com. Great news, everyone. American Shaman of PA's doors are back open for normal operations, and they're ready to bring you the much-needed relief that you've been waiting for. They care about their customers, and their customers keep coming back for more. Steve K says, American Shaman products drastically decrease my back pain and relieve my stress in just one month. Thank you. Stop by your local American Shaman of PA store for a free CBD sparkling water and free samples. Find their locations and more at HempusHealth.com. Do you love saving money but hate buying one of those coupon books filled with places you'll never go to? Well, here comes Quick Save Coupons to save the day. Quick Save Coupons is an app where you can find savings for restaurants, stores, and experiences that you will love. And here's the best part. It's free. No big coupon books to buy, no websites to give your information to. Quick Save Coupons will show you all of the savings in your area right on your phone. Just go to Google Play or the App Store and download the Quick Save Coupons app. Then start saving money on many of the places you already go to. Now, back to the Puff and Steph podcast. In Amsterdam, a man was ordered by a judge to move out of his expensive apartment 
due to multiple noise complaints from his neighbors. Apparently, this guy was making what they describe as loud, frightening cries at times, sounded like a howling wolf. The man claims he suffers from vocal tics caused by a psychological disorder. He underwent treatment in a psychiatric facility, began taking medication. It doesn't work. Uh, the neighbors once called in noise complaints to the police 13 times within three days. That's so many times. Is he okay? They're like crying sounds? It says it's, a, it's like a neurological disorder. Or a psychological disorder, excuse me. Soundproof walls installed uh, back in April of last year, but that didn't help. More than a few residents have sold their apartments and moved out of the building, specifically because this dude is howling and crying at all hours of the day and night. Oh my God. In January, the owner of the apartments took the case to court. Judge ruled that he had to leave. Aww. Kicked him out. Is this a legit disorder or is he just like talking? <laughs> is he just saying this out loud? <laughs> you imagine living next to this dude and he's screaming at all hours of the night and yeah. day? Especially right now. Where you're like doing everything from home, working from home. Yeah, that's tough. I don't blame the people for complaining. I just, if it's a real disorder, I feel for the guy. He's going to have to live in the woods by himself. <laughs> I think in America, this wouldn't fly. I don't think they could kick him out. Um, certain, I, obviously every group of people for the most part is protected one way or the other from, you know, losing their housing because of this. Um, is that something that he's got to put on a, like application for a new place to live right like yikes you have to put that at the bottom like little ast <laughs> asterisk anything else we should know i howl <laughs> <laughs> does he have to put that on his resume because also like oh, can you know. imagine trying to get hired for a job and just in the middle of the interview you're like making these noises <laughs> did you just, you just, just howl yeah it's a psychological tick i just i can't help it Anyway, next question. Uh, yeah, don't call us. We'll call you. <laughs> <laughs> Poor guy, though. Seriously, I mean, when it comes to dating, getting a job, living situation. You know, I haven't even... I thought this was just funny. I didn't give it much thought about dating. Yeah, going on dates, talking to, to women. You know, I've went on dates with some people who had their different stuff going on, but never anything in this category. <laughs> All right. Well, let's play the Steph What If game. <laughs> Do you meet a guy? Obviously, this is a guy that's going to be on a dating site or something. And about 20, 30 minutes into your date, you're sitting there eating. You're having a good time, a good conversation. You think a lot of the same stuff. You believe a lot of the same stuff. You both, for some reason, still like the Eagles. Aww. And all of a sudden, he just goes, ah, 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 ah. So, tell me about your mom. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, you're like uh, uh, what, what, what was that? Oh, yeah, sorry, I have this tick where I howl sometimes. So, about your mom, what does she do for a living? <laughs> <laughs> See, at that point, you have to find something else that doesn't add up and then blame it on that. Be like, I'm sorry, but, you know, the fact that you won't go to church is just an issue for me. And then just blame it on, so that you don't come off as the jerk. It's the ticks, isn't the it? The wolf boy. It's the howling, isn't it? <laughs> no, it's not. I I can get by that. You just, you know what? Like, you just, you wore stripes with plaid. And I just, I'm not, I'm not about that life. We don't I'm believe not, in the same things. <laughs> it's, 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 it's the howling. No, it's not the howling. I hardly even noticed. <laughs> what are you, what are you even talking about? The howling? <laughs> Poor, Poor wolf boy. Poor wolf boy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, time to stump Steph. More than 40% of married people have never done this for their spouse. What is it? 40% of married people have never done this for their spouse. Is this something you should be doing? See, I've never done it. And because I think it could be messy. So... Like, like actually messy, like, oh, there's peanut butter everywhere, or like... Yeah, no, like, yeah. Like legitimate... Yeah. I didn't know if you meant, like, it could cause problems. Oh, sure. Do you I, know I, what I mean? Yeah, 100%. No, it's because, it, like, it would be it would create a mess. Not figuratively, but literally. Something you do for your... Is it in the kitchen? Uh, no, that's the point. You're cooking in a different room of the house. That's not, not the necessarily, kitchen. Not necessarily cooking. Oh, 
Oh, breakfast in bed. Yeah. No, I don't do that. I don't play that game. Beds are for sleeping and other things. But <laughs> but I, I, I've obviously made my wife breakfast hundreds of times, right, throughout our relationship. But I'm not bringing it in bed. It just... Now, there are... If we had maybe the right serving instruments... You need one of those things, like, with the handles. Right. Yeah. Like, maybe... But we don't. Right. And it could just make a mess. Yeah. And now that, so, that idea kind of stresses me out too. Right, okay, good. Because you know, I thought you were going to be like, it doesn't matter. It's still romantic. And I agree that it is. But it is. if I do it and then she spills, she'll be mad at herself. And then somehow, some way, it'll be my fault too. Because I didn't bring her the right cup or something. <laughs> it, it, so it's just, I'd rather avoid all of that drama and just be like, hey, babe, I made you breakfast. Come downstairs where, you know... Normal human beings eat at a table, sit at... No, I do think it's a sweet idea. I've never had somebody do something like that for me. It's... I, I would love that. I think it's sweet. But you just said it would stress you out. I mean, it depends on... I guess, you know, ultimately depends on what you're eating. And you're right. The serving platter is a big factor. No, again, I'm not saying if we didn't have something that would work, I wouldn't have tried it. Because right. Because you know me. I am a guy who does try to do nice things for, you know, the special people in my life. But... I just, logistically, I look at things and go, I'd rather wake her up and be like, hey, babe, I got breakfast for you downstairs. Right. No, that, I get it. Than just running in with a tray. Right. And the dogs are jumping on the bed. <laughs> oh, true. Dogs are a whole other factor. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, I think logistically. I get it. 19% of spouses say this is the most annoying thing about their significant other. What is it? Is this a physical trait? Or like? Like some a way they look? Like something that, I guess what I meant to say was personality trait. Like something like, I'm trying to think of an example. Um, is it like something like something they do? Yes. It's or it's like, they well, they're arrogant or no, they're. Okay. It's something they do. Something that, that's what I was so trying to So it's not, ask. yeah, it's not like, yeah, was, personality trait. I was figuring out my words there. No, nope, you second. got it. No, nope, you did a good job. Um, something they do. Okay. They do at home? They could do this anywhere. Is it, does it have to do with eating or drinking? No. Does it have to do with sleeping? No. So you're going to say snore? Yeah. No. I was thinking different things you do when you're eating, drinking, sleeping. You could do this anywhere. Something to do with their phone? Nope. Is it when they're talking? Something they do when they're talking? This could happen while talking, sure. Is it a physical... Like, like what you're doing right now, like talk, I, they're, I'm annoyed with the way they talk with their hands. Yeah. Like some kind of physical thing that they, you said it's something they do. It's like something they do. It's not, let's say it's not physical. No. I don't really know how to answer that. I don't think it's physical. They make promises they can't keep. No, it's <laughs> nothing like that. It's not anything super deep like that. It's something very superficial. Um... It's something a lot of people can't change. They spit when they talk. <laughs> Good answer, but no. They can't change. Oh, the sound of their voice. I can't stand the sound of his voice. <laughs> You're so close. Their laugh. <laughs> oh, that's, oh, that's Nin harsh. 19% of spouses say the most annoying thing about their mate is their laugh. You can't really marry someone <clears> whose <throat> laugh you can't stand. Like, you're going to have to listen to that for the rest of your life. I feel like that is kind of a deal breaker. Like if really? you can't, like if you can't stand the way they laugh, and every time they laugh, you're gonna be cringing. Right. Well, I mean, laughing or howling, whatever. <laughs> Either it's a, way. It's a deal breaker. All right, friends. We will see you back here for the Big Friday show. Have yourself a fantastic Thursday. Bye. It's the Puffin Steph podcast.